Activision Blizzard workers recently went on strike. Uh, they have announced uh, this is a better ABK Workers Alliance. Uh, and now, according to uh, multiple different sources, I'm going to read from MMORPG.com, uh, this comes after days of walkouts by QA teams across Activision Blizzard in support of other testers at Raven Software. So uh, Raven Software, so look, how, how the games industry works is that you've got bigger studios, bigger publishers like Activision that will purchase smaller studios under a bit of an umbrella uh, for development. Uh, so now these smaller studios will develop the software, uh, games, and then the publisher, for example, EA, Activision, will go and publish it um, and, and, you know, make money, essentially. So now uh, this uh, Raven Software is one of the smaller developers that was purchased under the uh, umbrella of Activision Blizzard. And they had fired a bunch of people, a bunch of testers on Friday. Uh, this is some after even relocating at their own expense to work at the company. Now, this is another event in a very long line of problems for uh, the company that owns Hearthstone, StarCraft, World of Warcraft, the Diablo series, and other main, mainstream games, uh, AAA games that are staples in the gaming community. And it all started back when California launched an investigation into workplace violations. Uh, for example, discrimination against employees, uh, female employees specifically, sexual harassment, hostile work environment, and now even allegations of cover-ups of these very issues of CEO uh, that reaches all the way up to the CEO, Bobby Kotick. Uh, now, the company's employees also held two walkouts following the California investigation and major lawsuit into the company's employment practices. And again, last month, following the release of an investigative report by the Wall Street Journal on the now embattled CEO. Even shareholders have gotten involved uh, in order to get Kotick to resign or to be removed by the board. The board, unfortunately, is backing Kotick because Kotick seems to be making the company money. Uh, now, you had the sudden firings at Raven, which had affected employees even in good standing. Uh, and claiming that Raven had promised them positive changes, even in some cases leading to certain employees, accepting a delay in raises and promotions, then getting fired. So, what a disaster. As a result of all of this going on, we have seen unprecedented worker solidarity. Uh, and so, you have strikes, you have workers that are, are not working at the Raven studios that are standing up getting on the picket line and saying, all right, let's do this. Now, the games industry does not have a union. It is one of the non-unionized sectors in our economy. Um, but workers have banded together to uh, get together. They're, 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 they're trying to form a union and they're, they're practicing strikes. Uh, and ABK is uh, the main one. They're trying to form one. As I've reported before, instead of taking the demands of the workers uh, seriously in this group, Activision Blizzard instead hired a union busting firm, Wilmer Hale. Wilmer Hale is the same company that worked with Amazon to crush their unionization effort. Uh, and so that's the response from them, not taking any of their concerns seriously, firing different people, uh, hiring on these, these union busting firms. Uh, and so last straw, the Raven thing was the last straw. And they said, look, we're done, okay? We, we are going on strike. Um, we're not gonna put up with this anymore until Kotick is gone. And more changes are made at this company, the changes that we had been asking for. Uh, and of course, those are changes in, in basically, uh, you know, how employees are treated. They're asking for fair compensation. They're asking for an end to crunch culture. And they're asking for people who are implicated in the sexual harassment to be removed. And these are not, these are not big asks. These are the basics of what you know, people should, be, um, should have when working. Again, to be respected at work, to not be sexually harassed, to get fair benefits and fair pay and not end up having to do, you know, 16 uh, hour days, seven days a week in this massive crunch culture. 
again, the very basics, the very basics. Um, and, and understand, this has been going on in the games industry for a long time. If you've been following it, uh, I have, uh, not only am I uh, somebody who supports workers' rights and, and, and unionization efforts and worker solidarity, um, I'm also a big gamer. I enjoy video games. I love playing video games. Uh, and so seeing what's happened to the games industry over the last at least 10 years, I mean, and probably longer, has been devastating. Uh, again, um, for people who wanted to work in the games industry, working at Blizzard would have been a dream for them. But instead, it's a nightmare. You have the overwork, you have the time crunches, you have the massive deadlines. And, and the rampant sexual harassment for female employees, uh, workers, again, put in 16-hour days, seven days a week to try to get the games out. And you know what that does? It's, it burns out talent. It absolutely burns out talent. It also destroys creativity, which reduces the quality of games. Um, it, it, again, you have monetization, uh, you know, the, the switch to like, what is it? Always, always online gaming, loot boxes, for massive monetization. Um, again, all of this stuff is not only, uh, the games industry is not only anti-consumer, it's also massively anti-worker. And there's the rush to get them out on time for the publishers, the shareholders, and of course, gamers themselves. And, and the result of all of this, you have massively broken buggy games that get released to incredibly bad reviews with deep monetization. Uh, and an example of that, of course, look, uh, Anthem. Anthem is a good example of a disaster. So deeply uninspired that game was. Uh, and again, I played it. There was somewhat, you know, a little bit of potential. The flying mechanics were fun. Uh, and, but it was just copy paste. Very small play area, weird loading screens in places where there shouldn't be serious issues. Uh, and you can point at other games as an example of crunch culture. Um, and, and this was, again, Bioware Magic. And they were taken over by Electronic Arts, EA, one of the worst offenders in the entire games industry. But they're being rivaled by Blizz Activision Blizzard uh, and Ubisoft, which are also disaster. Such disasters. Uh, and, but even you, have, you even had good games that have suffered. Cyberpunk 2077. When it was released, it was a broken buggy mess. On console, it was so bad that it had to get pulled from the PlayStation Store. And by the way, Sony also having sexual harassment issues uh, for their employees. Uh, and so, now, the thing is, uh, 2077, Cyberpunk actually is not a bad game itself. It just, you know, it's good when it works. It's good when it works. One of the few good stories in gaming lately is Final Fantasy XIV. I mean, that's a game that I, I really enjoy. I, I play it. Uh, I'm subbed. You know, it, that, that game went through a lot. It got scrapped at the beginning because it was an absolute mess, a disaster. Once again, rushed, right? Then new guy took over, scrapped it completely. Went, they went back to the drawing board, they re-released it, and it's actually good now. It's a good game now. <laughs> uh, it, they put out content pretty regularly, and as far as I know, they haven't had any issues with crunch or sexual harassment. <laughs> um, now, they have had problems. They just came out with a new expansion, and, uh, you, know, you know, the... I mean, the queues are horrible uh, waiting to get into that game. Um, but, you know, hey, launches are never pretty. They're just never pretty. Uh, but, look, as I said before, there are other issues with, with other publishers that are disastrous. Uh, the industry is, a, is a, just a, a horrible place for workers to, to work. And, and, of course, it's much worse for women. Yesterday, uh, a Blizzard employee named Christine had recounted her own experience with sexual harassment, assault, and discrimination. She would recall uh, getting sexual requests from her supervisors. Uh, and when, of course, she'd tell HR, human resources, well, they'd do nothing. They'd cover it up. And, of course, understand that human resources is not on your side. 
they've never been on your side. They're not your friend. They're actually literally part of the company. And so they're there to try to uh, cover up for this and to protect the, the companies itself. Uh, and so that's why, by the way, the fact that HR is so terrible is a reason why you need to band together with your fellow employees, your fellow workers in a union. That's why this is so important. If, uh, you know, Activision Blizzard were to unionize, and, and, and by the way, uh, more positive union news, Starbucks. There was a Starbucks store that just passed a union vote and became unionized. And so that's a huge step for workers in that industry. And now hopefully we get to see uh, a union push here, but they need your help. I'm gonna put a link in the description uh, to a tweet by ABK uh, for a strike fund. They don't have a union. They don't have the money to sustain a strike. They need your help. They need donations. Um, you know, they need support. They need solidarity to actually try to hold Kotick and the company and the industry itself accountable for the ways that they have treated their workers in the past and currently. And so please go to that link. Please support them. Do mutual aid. Help them out with their strike fund so we can finally get some justice uh, for these workers that have been mistreated and to change the industry for the better, not just for the workers themselves, but also the games, the love of games. Good workers, better workers, better workers that are taken care of by the company, better companies produce better games. And that's a fact. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share with your friends. You can subscribe and help out the channel by becoming a patron. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf, or you can become a channel member as well by hitting the join button below.